So it's Jamie Theo MMA here with Low Kick MMA, joined by Tony Gravely. Tony, thanks for joining me today, mate. How are you? No problem at all. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Doing great. No worries. It's all good. Um, so I just want to touch on your your last fight, if that's okay. Things obviously didn't go your way, um, but it was against a, a very tough competitor in Javid Basharat. How difficult was it to prepare for someone like Javid, who's quite unorthodox? It's you know it's it's really hard when someone um, he moves he moves very different in the some of the things he does even when, though he keeps his hands down and things he still does a really good job of like getting his head out of the way so it's it's like you know it, it, the way he looks it looks like he's really easy to hit but he was actually really really hard to hit really evasive good at avoiding you know when I wanted to exchange. And um, j just hard, hard to deal with, you know, those guys, a longer guy, guy, that, guy that's kind of hard to get close to unless he wants to get close to you. But, um, you know, it's all learning experience. It's just a learning experience. It was hard to do. Um, looking back, you know, there's things, you know, wish I could have done, I should have done, but I didn't do. But it's just how it goes. Only thing I can do is, you know, use what I learned and uh, apply apply it for the next time whenever I'm in the same situation, similar opponent, things like that. So um, I'm just trying to move forward and get a win and, and uh, keep the ball rolling. Definitely, mate, yeah. Um, so before that fight, you said that you'd be too much for Javid. Do you think you went in there and implemented the game plan you wanted to or did kind of things change once you were in there with him? I think I did. I think the first round I did, um, I did what I wanted to do. And it was just kind of hard because when I would take him down, he did the right things. He never settled. He never, um, you know, he moved right away. And it was just kind of hard to, to slow him down a little bit. He was very like kind of squirmy, you know, so things like that. It's really hard for people to, to get a hold of somebody when they don't want to be held. It's like holding a cat, you know, like that doesn't want to be held. So they're squirmy. And he was like that. So it, it was hard, you know, I, um, I knew he would be tough. Um, and it's still a fight that I think that I could win. I know that I'm capable of beating him as, as a fighter, but you know, some days things work out, some days don't, but um, he was tougher than I expected him to be for sure. Yeah. Like you said before, you've touched on it just in those those first two questions. You you got you kind of taking those experiences into your next few fights. Um, what have you learned from the the seven fights that you've been with the UFC? Kind of that you're going to take into the next few. Because obviously that fight alone, like I said, it was against someone quite unorthodox. But that's kind of been the the case in in a lot of the fights that you've had so far in the UFC. So what have you kind of learned in those seven that you're going to be taking forward? I think the biggest thing is being able to adjust on the fly, like between rounds, being able to adjust what you're doing, what's what you're doing right, being able to to keep doing those things, and also the things that you usually do right that aren't working, how to just kind of go to the corner, reset, take some deep breaths, and come back out and 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 you know change what you're doing to make it work. Because sometimes it's easy to. You know, you fight a certain way, you do certain things, you get stubborn, you come out and you want to keep doing it over and over because as a fighter, as a wrestler, you know, things like that, you, you're kind of, we're stubborn. We want to do what we're going to do and, and we're, we want to like push past the adversity. And sometimes you have to kind of step back, reassess, do something else. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just, I'm learning to, to continue to do that. And my UFC career has helped me with that. It's, you know, I've, I've learned a, a lot throughout my career and just in the, well, my career in general, but especially the UFC, because everybody's tough. There are no easy fights. Um, everybody's going to, going to scrap from beginning to end and it's going to be really hard. So just making myself, um, and it starts in practice, going back, doing the same things and, um, you know, going to the corner, resetting. And once the, once you go to the corner, it's a new round. It's almost like a new fight. You know, you, 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 um, get a deep breath, get yourself together and you go back out and find what's working and, and try your best to keep doing it. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and those last few fights that you've had have been at the UFC apex, which is it's somewhere that gets quite a lot of criticism from fans um, from a fighter's perspective, like yourself, who's had the experience fighting there. What's your opinion on, on actually fighting in the apex? I like the apex because uh, mainly because the cage is a little smaller, which means the action is going to be pressed a lot faster. 
and also you can hear a little better like the fans add a different a different you know aspect to fighting in general because you get everybody they're really loud they're yelling they're chanting and people feed off that energy and um but as far as the apex goes you don't quite have that but you can hear your corners better you can hear instructions better it reminds me of um like fighting and practicing like when you when you train and practice when we spar in our gyms um you know we got people in there around our cage but it's not as loud as it would be in a real fight so it's very similar to the apex is very similar to how it is in training so um it's a little ca more calming if you're the kind of person that gets you know worked up when you see the fans and the lights and things like that but um you know I, i've done both i've i fought you know, I've only had two UFC fights that weren't in the apex, but before that, before the UFC, I've, you know, I've been around all the, all the crowd, all the fans. So, um, you know, this fight will actually be not at the apex. This one's going to be at, um, uh, it's, at a, a, at a, it's a hotel. Yeah. Yep. It'll be, it'll be at a hotel and a casino. So, uh, it'll be a little more people. Uh, it'll be loud. People will be drunk yelling, but that's, that's some good energy. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, taking that energy, using it, and uh, hopefully, you know, can excite the crowd. And what was your kind of reaction when you heard that it was going to be at the, I think it's the theatre at Virgin Hotels, it's called. What was your reaction when you heard that it was going to be there? Were you excited or were you a bit kind of sceptical that it was, again, it was not in front of like a, a big crowd as such? Um, well, with me, I, I really, really didn't matter. I like the Apex just because, like I said, it's it's kind of like just like the gym, you know. When you spot when I go and spar in the gym, it feels the same, and I can hear better. But to me, it, it doesn't matter. It's kind of I'm kind of excited too, though, because you know, you my my family and some of my friends get to come watch me fight, so that's also a cool, you know, cool thing too. And and it's different, like when you get the crowd and you get the chanting and you get to like feed off of their energy and use their energy. Um, you know, it could work both ways. It could be you know, they could be cheering for the other guy and it possibly, you know, he uses it. But with all being said, it's it's just a part of the process. It's a part of learning. And it's fun. It makes it fun regardless. So um, I'm, I'm actually at first, I, I wished it was going to be at the apex. And the more I kind of um, thought about the idea and realized that, you know, now I can have people come watch me and I get the get to use the fans energy. I'm actually excited to to be able to get back into an arena again. You kind of get in the best of both worlds with it being where it is because it's it's kind of compact enough that you will still be able to hear the things that you like to hear, but also yeah. there is going to be a bit of a bigger crowd than what it is at the apex. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, I suppose you could say it like that, can't you? Yeah, that's what I was thinking because I kind of looked I looked up the arena, like kind of what it looks like. It can only be but so big inside of a hotel, but exactly, yeah. um, it's like a theater. So I think the rings on like the cage is on one side and then everybody's it's like a baseball diamond kind of situation mm -hmm. going. So, so yeah, I guess it is, I guess it is kind of where you can kind of get the best of both worlds. Yeah. So obviously we've touched on where the fight will take place, but just touching on your opponent himself, Victor Henry, he's quite a, an experienced opponent. Um, how do you think that the preparations have gone differently this time? maybe as compared to, to your last few fights when you've been fighting fighters that are a bit bit less experienced than what Victor Henry is? I think it's, you know, it's the same because when I, when I prepare, when I, I, I may be training for certain people when I fight, but when, um, but when I'm actually training, the people that I'm training with are seasoned veterans. They're, they're the best of the best, you know? So um, just getting to go with those guys, it's, it's no different you know, other than actually stepping in the fight. But, you know, I, I know he's he's got a lot of experience. He he has a lot of fights just like me. You know, we we kind of those guys that had a lot of fights on the regional scene before we got signed to the UFC. So he um, – and I've actually heard his name before, but I think he's had more fights overseas, like uh, in, in like, Asia, uh, Japan, yeah. like different things like that. Verizon, <laughs> didn't he, yeah. yeah, I think so. So, yeah, I, I fought more in the United States – um, with all my fights and he fought um, you know more in like the the Asian countries but very similar as far as um, you know technically he probably does have more experience because he's been fighting longer than I have but um, you know we we've got we both have a lot of fights and, and I know that he's going to be one of those guys that fights from beginning to end and that's what I that's what I'm prepared for I'm prepared to scrap from bell to bell 
15 minutes. Um, you know, he's not going to be easy to get out of there, but I know I can get him out there, out of there. Um, but I just can't rush it. I have to be, I have to be on for 15 minutes and I'm aware of that and I'm prepared for it. Yeah, definitely. And it's a, it's an extremely intriguing matchup as well. Have you kind of looked into it as far as the matchup in, in terms of that? And, and what do you think of the matchup itself? Yeah, I think he he's a he's a volume he's a volume guy in general, volume striker, um, very active on the ground. So um, a lot to deal with. But um, I know there there are things that I think my style is is really good for this. You know, I'm I just need to make sure that I'm I'm on point from beginning to end, um, not not rushing big big punches, not rushing my takedowns or anything, um, being being clean good defense he's gonna he's gonna throw a lot of kicks a lot of a lot of kicks to my body kicks to my leg just need to make sure that's one thing i didn't do in my last fight um javid he he threw a lot of front kicks and i didn't address the front kicks and they slowly like got in got in in my stomach and slowly like took my took my breath away and made my cardio a little little bad a little worse so um that's definitely that's one big thing that i'm that i've got from the last fight too that's going to carry over. I'm going to make sure I address those front kicks from the start and dress all the body kicks from the start um, to make sure that I'm, he's not chipping away at my cardio. So um, as long as I do that um, and keep, keep my striking clean, I'll be good. And um, on top, I you know, if, if I take him down, I know that he's going to be throwing submissions. Just got to make sure that I'm, I'm tight and I'm striking when I can and, and doing everything I can to, to, um, you know, just, just be very technical. Definitely, yeah. And since I just kind of want to touch on your your UFC tenure as a whole now. Um, so since 2019's contender series fight that you won, um, how would you sum up your your career so far with the UFC, and, and how do you think it's gone? I would. It, it's it's kind of bittersweet, you know. There there's some fights that I'm proud of, and fights that I'm not proud of. But that's that's just the way it goes, you know, but at the end of the day, I look back and I've gave, I gave everything I could with what I had in each fight. So, you know, there are fights that were, I've had all kinds of things. I've had fights that were went quick, you know, for me, I had fights that were, were drawn out that were really hard. I had fights where I was winning and then lost. And, you know, so, um, you know, it's, it's a roller coaster, just like life. So, um, but it's been good. It's been good. I, I can't complain at all as far as, um, getting the opportunity to do something that I love and getting the opportunity to continue to live out a dream. So this fight's really important for me. I got, I got to win so I can keep doing that. I got to, I got to, I got to keep winning. I keep showing that I belong here so I can keep living this dream out. Definitely. Yeah. And you've been, I think I'm correct in saying this, you've been training in Taekwondo since you're around four years old. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Obviously, you've been in the world of MMA for a, for a very long time. Do you think you're still learning new things every day, or or do you think you're kind of just um, you kind of you've, you're already there and you've you've learned everything you can learn? No, no, that's this sport. Is, this is a sport you you will not get any. You will not be successful if you think that you know everything because there's so much and it's constantly evolving. Like from the start, I. From the time I first started fighting to now, the sport's already evolved so much, especially since I started watching it as a kid. When I was taking Taekwondo, I would watch UFC, and it was completely different. You know, the rules, the the styles of fighting used to be one style versus the other style. One guy was strictly a striker. One guy was strictly a wrestler, a grappler. But now everybody sees the sport as the actual sport. You know, MMA isn't just, um, you know, boxer versus a wrestler. It's... Everybody knows how to punch, kick, elbow, knee, grapple, all that stuff. So um, it's just – it's constantly evolving. So with that being said, if, if you want to be good, you have to constantly evolve. So, you know, I've I've been an American top team for about three years now, and I've, I've been just soaking stuff up like a sponge. So, um, you know, every, every fight I go out, I see the differences. Maybe other people don't necessarily see the differences, but I can see and I can feel – um, all the differences I'm making, all the all the um, the gains I've made, and I just look to do the same thing every time. Just look to go out and show my progression, um, not only for the UFC but for myself. To you know, my ultimate goal is to be a champion, and I know it's a hard it's a hard goal, but you know, as long as I give my best, 
um, you know, I, I'm happy with the results either way. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then just the last thing I'd like to do um, is I've got a couple of more fun questions for you, if, if that's okay. Um, okay. I like to call it split decisions because it, it kind of, it's not putting you in, in that position where you have to make a split decision, but you'll see what I mean when I, I kind of read the questions out. Uh, um, have you ever heard of Hot Ones, the, the Hot Wings Challenge? Yeah, yeah, I have. It's a, it's a bit like that where it's just quick fire questions. So okay. just answer them as you hear them. Um, so the first one is, if you could change or add one rule in MMA, what would it be? I would, I really like that, um, like in the, like a, for one FC, you can knee and kick a down opponent, like pride rules. I wish mm. that I could do that. You know, with that being said, I might be on the other side and say like, <laughs> oh, that sucks, you know. Yeah. But I'm in a position where I'm always in those situations because like if I was inside control to be able to throw a knee is like a game changer. You know, so that's one rule that I that I really like that I think I wish they would add. I understand why they don't have it, but that's a rule that I would like to be able to do. Yeah, I, I like that one. It's a, it's a good one that I, I very rarely hear fighters say. Like you said, maybe it's because they, they don't want to be on the receiving end of it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, I like that one, yeah. So the next one is, if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, but it gave the perfect nutrients, what would it be? Man, that's a tough one. Yeah. I would say sushi. Oh, okay. Sushi's good like sushi a good – you get a little bit of everything. You get some rice in there, yeah. some – some vegetables, some meat. I would say if I could only eat one type of food, and you can change sushi up pretty, pretty. That's true, cool. yeah. So I would say probably sushi. I'm gonna come clean. I've never tried sushi, so. I can't, oh my gosh, I can't you gotta try you on that one. <laughs> There's a million yeah. kinds of sushi. Like mm. I think most people think it's just completely raw fish all the time. Yeah, no, but that's... it's not. No, yeah, it's not. There's all kinds. What have you got a favorite then that you'd recommend for me to try or? Um. There's all kinds of the spot there or no? <laughs> it depends on if you like, do you like raw stuff? Like, would you eat like a piece I would of eat. Like yeah, I'll try it. Yeah. salmon or something? Yeah. So there's all kinds of like types, but I don't really know mm -hmm. the names. I just kind of look on the menu yeah. at what sounds like some stuff I like, yeah. but it all ends up tasting pretty similar, but mm. you know, it's, it's good. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is you're at, you're in training, you're at the gym. Um, and someone lets you play one song. What's the one song that you play? Man, the one song. But it's in a gym setting, so maybe that might change your your uh, answer. Man, that's a that's a tough one because yeah. I go through so you know my 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 song list changes per mood. You know. Yeah. Um, Man, that's a good <laughs> question. I'm I stumped you there. Um, have you got like a hype song or anything like that that you like? No, I don't to really have a of... specific song that like gets me hype. I'm mm. just my mood changes so much, and my wife is always laughing at me because like I'll play the most random songs, like they're just completely, completely opposite. Like in in the in the uh like the genre, so that, that one's a tough one. That yeah, something upbeat, obviously, but I don't know. That's that's a tough one. That's a really maybe tough we'll one. we'll come back to that one. At a, at I like old point. school. I like old school hip hop though. Okay, yeah. Like so something, something along those, the lines of old school yeah. hip hop. Okay, I like that. Um, so this one you can take it however you want it. You can do it part by part. But the overall is, if you could make a, the perfect fighter using fighters from past and present, who would you use for the attributes of grappling, striking, and heart? Hmm. For striking, I would use... I really like... Um, I like Piotr Jan's striking. I, re I really like his striking. He came to our gym one time, and his striking is really clean. I like mm -hmm. I like his striking. Um, I would use Marab, Marab's cardio, his his heart and cardio. He he's up there. Um, um jujitsu. I would use. Hmm. hmm. And Damian Myers got some good jujitsu, mm. but but there's some other jujitsu guys that are really good too. So I guess 
I feel like I'm missing somebody that's really good at jujitsu right now, and I'm having a brain fart. Uh, Damien Miles a good Charles, to be fair. That's current. Um, Old school. Let's see. So we got oh, we we got striking. Um, we got. You could you use it as a, a grappling as a whole as well, though, if you wanted to? So you could do like jujitsu and wrestling all in one. So who's got the best all round kind of? That sort of thing, unless mm-hmm. you're thinking someone that I'd say as, a whole. as far as um, I really like. Well, as far as wrestling, I think Henry Cejudo is the best wrestler. Obviously, he's a Olympic gold medalist, which is hard to beat. You know, his mm-hmm. wrestling's up there, so it's really hard to like. Him, but he doesn't have the jujitsu though. So yeah, it's that's true. Mix those two, so yeah. I would say I would like. The reach of John Jones, if you could, yeah. this would be a weird looking body, you know, like a weird, <laughs> weird body. Yeah. You know, it would be like the reach of John Jones with the power of Francis and Ghani. Yeah. This, this person would look like a bug. They would just look like <laughs> weird. And um, the chin of, let's see, who's got a good chin? Um, man, who's got a good chin? There's quite a, a few, even even from the past as well. Hey, yes, has a good past. chin. Yeah, yeah. He's got a good chin. Um, uh, a name that comes up quite frequent, frequently when I ask this question is Max Holloway. Max Holloway, yeah, he's he's mm. got a good chin. Any he, any he, he's got good cardio too. His yeah. volume's really good. Mm. And let's see, did we cover it? We can, all right, so yeah, I think we got it. Yeah. And let's see. I'm trying to think specifically like kicks. I like Peter Jan's. I yeah. like his his boxing Boxer. really good. Mm. I'm trying to think. there's got to be somebody with a little. I Wonderful. like. I like. Yes, his kicks are really good, mm. and I like Corey Sandhagen's fluidity. Yeah. I like how he he mm. covers space really really well. So yeah, that's these right, these sounds like a perfect fighter. These that? body types are completely different yeah. from my body type. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a great fighter though I'll it does that. it sounds like a weird looking person though but yeah really good <laughs> yeah um and then the last one mate is how did your fight with victor henry go down on march the 11th you know I, i've 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 envisioned it so many different ways but you know i know it's going to be a tough fight and um you know he's going to be hard to finish but i i know i can do it but um it's going to be a scrap that that's the only thing i can really say i, I know it's going to be a hard fight um, I'm prepared for it to be the hardest fight I've ever had. I've trained as if it was. I've taken my mind to this dark place as if it was. So I'm just re- I'm just ready for it to be. You know, it could be fight of the night on a, on a stack card. So that's that's what I'm expecting it to be. But I'm I'll be ready to finish whenever I get the opportunity. Amazing. Oh, uh, the last thing I want to do as well is congratulate you and your wife on the the recent pregnancy announcement. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're, we're really excited. You know, this is obviously, our, well, this is our first child. So we're, we're just growing and, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to be the best I can be as far as helping her and, you know, doing everything. So once the fight's over, I get to be full dad mode, get to get my mind off of violence a little bit, you know, and get to get to focus everything on her and the baby and things like that. So I'm really excited. So, um, so it's going to be a big year. You know, I got got this fight. This fight's really big. As soon as that fight's over, um, you know, I'm focused on being. Well, I'm already focused on being a dad, but I get to, mm-hmm. get to erase all the all the fight stuff for a little mm-hmm. bit. So I, I'm I'm excited about that. Yeah, amazing. Well, yeah, congratulations on that, mate, and and obviously best of luck for the the fight on March the 11th. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, no and have a, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.